Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I want to show you my brand new 2022 Ram 2500 Laramie Night Edition. And in my opinion, this is the perfect truck for what I do. I'm going to take you around the outside, show you all those features. I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff inside of it. I'm blown away by some of the nice things about this, but we'll get to that. And then I'm going to show you the full sticker, show you what I paid in detail for the truck, you know, what this feature cost and what that feature cost. So if you're in the market for a truck like this, you can compare that too. Let's start with the exterior. So obviously with it being a night edition, everything is blacked out, all your badging is blacked out. This is a, a matte finish, this is blacked out, everything on it. It's actually dirty now because I've been driving on dirt roads, but I went with the fixed running boards instead of the drop down electric. This is all blacked out. It's got 20 inch rims. I like that a lot better than the 22 inch rims I had on my limited ram. Of course you've got all your collision sensors here. All of these lights are LED all the way up and they are automatic brights. Here's your front camera. All of this badging is blacked out. Your hooks. These mirrors have a lot more cameras than my other one had. You've got a camera here, a camera here, and your mirror swivels up. So when you're towing a trailer, you've got a better wide view mirror, but it's not out there in your way all the time. Let's come around to the back. Of course, you've got your diesel and your def here. I've got a B&W hideaway reversible hitch on here. So the two and five sixteenths and the two inch are tucked behind. So as far as your electrical connectors back here, this is an auxiliary camera port for trailer cams. This is an RV plug and this is your trailer light plug. Got this is blacked out and there's a light that shines on that. Of course, your camera is here. You're not gonna see this all that well, but this pops open like that and it rolls back. I have a drop down step right here. So of course we have the factory gooseneck and fifth wheel set up here. And when I ordered this, I made a mistake on the order form and I I got this fifth wheel carrier when all I wanted was it to be prepped for the gooseneck. So I've ordered a B&W puck system to go in here for gooseneck trailers and this fifth wheel connection system is for sale if anyone wants it so also in the bed it's got a spray in bed liner it's got connection points at the four corners of the bed got lights here led lights we've got your wiring for the i'm hearing the, the air suspension releasing air Here's your trailer connector, the RV connector, and a 110 400 watt power supply. And there's the cargo light, and here's your cargo camera and your gooseneck camera. When I got to the dealership and saw that this is the bed cover I got, I was a little disappointed in that too. So there were two things that I thought was happening and wasn't accurate. One is I didn't want the fifth wheel. And two, I wanted this to be one of the hard plastic ones. Like the one on my Ram Limited, I could stand on it. It was really substantial. And I like those better 
But this is kind of nice because it very easily, you can remove the whole thing if you want to fill the back of the bed. Whereas that hard one folded back to within about five inches, but if you needed to use the whole bed, it was more awkward to take it out. So, kick the step up. I like the step. It's about like the one that I had on my my Ram Limited, but I had to add that one after the fact. This one came with it. See the key fob, got lock, unlock, remote start, and the tailgate option. Other than that, this is not one of those fancy tailgates, the trifold tailgates or whatever. Not something I was really interested in. Another thing you might be wondering if I'm getting what I call a perfect truck, why it doesn't have RAM boxes. You couldn't get RAM boxes with some of the other configurations. And you'll see when we look at the pricing sheet on this, I focused on performance packages, the advanced safety package and the advanced towing package. And one of those two could not be added with the RAM box. When you clicked on it, it, it automatically deselected the RAM boxes. It might have been on the towing package, getting the air shocks, the air suspension, is what disqualified you from having the RAM boxes. Now as we walk around here, I think I already said something about the tires. That Ram Limited I had had beautiful wheels, but they're 22 inch, and with a tire size, you had this much tire. That's not a tow vehicle with a tire with that kind of profile on it. You know, this is a 20 inch rim, but it's still got a nice, meaty tire on it. I found it really odd that on a night edition truck, the white walls were out or the white lettering was out. You guys think I should turn that around and have the all black tire as well? Let's jump in the truck real quick. Okay, so this is a system a lot of you might be familiar with. There's the lock button. To unlock it, you just touch. Lock unlock so inside the truck it's got a nice leather interior with this raised stitching i like some chrome accents this interior is really nice but not quite as nice as it was on my limited i love that these floor mats go almost edge to edge and pop in and out so you have very little access to get your carpet dirty your stained nice looking stitching on the seats the familiar ram console here got a charging port inside here and this slides back for storage below this is a wireless charging pad here, but I never use that. All right, so here's our start. Truck's running. Really nice gauge cluster. You've got a lot of adjustability here in the things that you can look at. Right there you can see the DPF or diesel particulate filter. There's a ton of other information in here. Be under vehicle info for instance, there's your oil life, fuel filter life, battery, exhaust brake. You've got all your different fluid temperatures from coolant to transmission, oil, oil pressure. You know if you're doing a heavy pull I switched off of it there. There's your tire pressures, coolant temperature. So like if you're doing a really heavy pull, you might just want to monitor your transmission temperature the whole time. You've got that option. And one thing you can't see here, you can configure on this screen what you want on each side. I usually put my oil life on this side and the distance to empty on the fuel on this side. And then I'll put the speedometer at the top even though it's there. And most of the time I drive with the uh, fuel economy being displayed here. Now we'll look at the info screen. So we've got 
a 12 inch display here it's got a lot of different things you can customize everything you want you know cargo cam trailer cam backup cam you can customize all this put whatever you want here add widgets like say I want my now playing on there it shows I was listening to a podcast earlier chiefs some bingles if I hit play on my phone or I can play it from there I can listen to that but I don't usually use these screens go to your media screen you can go to your radio all that comfort your heated seats vented seats you know just standard stuff if you want to use their navigation you've got that here but I don't CarPlay that will show me my turn by turn here my media that's playing here and whatever it thinks I might want to see that I've looked at recently is going to display there I can switch it and have same Google Maps on the whole screen pretty cool show you pretty much my favorite safety feature it seems like I'm gonna tell you it seems probably silly or petty to make a big deal about a rearview mirror but that's how I feel about this because if you're pulling something that weighs 18,000 pounds and you've got that strapped down on your trailer, you know, that's a combined weight. If I'm pulling that, that's a 5,000 pound trailer, a 10,000 pound skid steer, and a, some attachments or whatever. You've got a load that's 16, 18,000 pounds back there. You want to know what's going on with it, right? This is the best system I've seen. I can put some of this on, I can put the backup camera on the main screen and stuff, but having that rear view mirror be aimable and always showing you like an HD version of what's behind you is phenomenal. You can also set this up. I'll show you like how the controls work on this. So on here, this is just brightness on this screen. makes more difference at night this is where you aim it so your loads a little taller a little bit shorter then this lets you switch between your auxiliary trailer cameras and the cameras on the truck so if you're pulling a trailer you can see what's behind the trailer it's pretty nice and of course at the same time you go into vehicle got this trailer reverse guidance here this is showing you your two rear view mirrors and I can aim those to either side so you got your left mirror right mirror surround camera so anytime no matter what else I'm doing let's exit out of this go to home so I'm on CarPlay. This is the screen I normally drive on. I'm sitting here, I can see my media and I can see my maps where I'm going. Now let's say I stop and I wanna back up. It immediately takes me to this surround cam. So I can see behind me. And also, I can see right there how close I am to the camera that's beside me really good for parking to have that surround cam view uh, probably a lot of cameras or probably a lot of vehicles have that surround cam but it's just really well implemented and then of course if you want a bigger backup camera you've got that you've got your cargo camera vehicle some of these are new to me on cameras cargo camera so if I have stuff in the bed of the truck and I want to make sure it's not blowing away I can look at it there I can also see if the if there's a problem with my hookup or I can keep it on this while hooking up to a gooseneck so that's pretty cool then if we come out of there and you go to off-road it's showing you here for instance your steering angle I'm turning at 38 degrees got you can put your gauges on here if you want pitch and roll I haven't actually done this let's see what if I drive kind of off the side of my driveway see I'm in a two degree three degree pitch as I drive off this 
edge of my driveway. Pretty good for off-road. Uh, let's go for a drive here. It's about to start telling me I need to put my seatbelt on, which I do. All right, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you can easily switch. Say you don't like that, or you don't like this for that application. Now it's a regular mirror. So I wanted to check the mirror, maybe see what the kids are doing in the back seat. Now I'm back on the camera behind the truck. So, in the past, I've test driven some three quarter ton and one ton trucks, and it always kind of felt, well, it just feels like you're driving a huge truck. It's like being in a dump truck sometimes or something. And, you know, vehicles are evolving from that. And I mean, I'm coming from a half ton truck, I'm not coming from a car, but this doesn't feel like a truck to drive. I mean, it. It, like if your wife has an SUV or if you have an SUV or whatever the story is it feels comfortable to drive just like that and it's got all the nice things you might want with your heated and your vented seats the rain sensing wiper blades the automatic brights um, your advanced driving system which is the lane keep assist so if you start to swerve off into the other lane, it automatically pulls you back into your lane. You can turn that on and off if you want. Let's see what else. The adaptive cruise control, which I love. So if I'm going 70, car switches lanes in front of me on the interstate and they're going 60, truck will automatically slow down to 60 and maintain a follow distance that you set then when they get back over not that I spend a lot of time in the passing lane or anything but when they get back over the truck automatically speeds back up to your set speed so big fan of that big fan of the way this thing drives I'll show you the rear interior then I'll show you the sticker the whole build list, everything I included on this, what I paid for it, where I actually did save a few dollars, even though this is a ridiculously expensive truck, and, you know, everything that went into it. So, let's take a look at the back real quick. Okay, so on the rear doors, seats pop up, you got these fold outs, so, you stand those up and fold it out. Now you have a shelf you can set stuff on. Same thing on the other side. You got your two cup holders here, your power port here, the four chargers. You got cup holders, cup holders. And we'll fold this back up. You're really limited on space under the seat. You've got this right here. Then you've got a pull down center with cup holders there. And this lifts up, but when you lift this one, you have a sub under there. I love these floor mats that cover basically the entire floor. Makes it a lot easier to keep the vehicle clean because you can pop these out and spray them off. Then you've got these boxes under here for storage. A lot of times I'll keep straps in here. This lifts out. Okay, this bin right here lifts out if you need to dump this out or clean it. It seems like they've tried to make this truck easy to clean. So 
the way they set it up. Drop that down, and there she is. I came back out here later in the day because there were a couple things I forgot to show you. One, we'll make this a mirror. Okay, we have a sliding rear glass right here. We've got a sunroof. And I don't think I mentioned anything about these. I haven't actually looked at this one, but I believe it's a regen. I went and looked it up, and I was completely wrong on what that button does. That is an exhaust braking system, which uses the engine to slow down the truck and saves wear and tear on your brakes. There's your tow haul button. This is rear and front proximity warnings. They will keep you from running into something in a parking lot. This raises and lowers the truck to make it easier to hook up your trailer. And here is your manual brake controller. So you just squeeze this to apply trailer brakes. You can hit this plus and minus button right here to adjust how much brake it applies. Down here we have down here we have another 110 outlet Another thing I forgot to mention is that you don't just have the ability To tilt your main mirror. You can also Tilt the side mirror So that is moving Only the small side mirror and the number one thing I forgot to do is pop the hood So let's pop the hood and have a look here we go. So it's a 6.71 turbo diesel. It's got dual batteries, dual alternators, 850 foot pounds of torque, and I don't know, I think it was 400 horsepower. All right, so let's go over the pricing on this. I'm gonna read this to you sitting right here, and then hopefully I can get a good still shot of this and overlay it over the top. Base price on the truck, $55,410. The total price out the door is $84,350. Now I'm not gonna cover every line on this that's itemized because some of it's smaller stuff, like you've got $600 to upgrade the paint and the interior. But some of the biggest stuff, number one is to get the diesel engine instead of the gas engine is $9,400. The next really big thing I see is $2,000 to upgrade to the 12 inch touchscreen. Some of the other big items are not individual things, they are packages that you have to choose. And if you want certain things in a package, you have to take the whole package. The most expensive is getting the night edition. It's also the least important thing that I did. And I almost left that out and I struggled with the decision, but it was an extra $2,600 for what is purely cosmetic. Things that I really did not want to do without were safety group B, 
which has the digital rear view mirror, the adaptive steering system, the adaptive cruise control, collision warning, lane keep assist. To me, that's pretty much essential if you're going to spend this kind of money that you get all of that. Then I did small things like a transfer case skid plate for $100. An engine block heater for $145. And I spent $1,100 on that fifth wheel setup that I didn't want. Also, the automatic leveling rear air suspension was $1,700. And the running boards were $800. Another thing that really didn't need to be on there was $1,100 for a sunroof. So, the two things that I really didn't need is the night edition and the sunroof, and I could have taken that $84,000 down to $80,000. But I sat there and looked at it, and I said, I need a truck with this tow rating, and I could get a tradesman or something a lot cheaper, but if I'm going to spend this much money, I want to make sure I have all those safety upgrades and performance upgrades and suspension upgrades and from there if I'm doing all of that you're already at 70 75,000 I said I might as well go all in and get the exact truck that I want and that's what I did I really got a disappointment as I was editing this video and I thought I had a 20,000 pound tow capacity with 2,800 pound payload and I checked my exact VIN number, and I only have a 17,000 pound tow capacity and a 2,200 pound payload. And, like I said, that really bummed me out because I thought I had paperwork when I ordered it showing the higher tow capacity. But, nothing I can do about it now, and that will still haul a skid steer. Alright, well I guess that about wraps it up. It's a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a truck. Makes me sick to my stomach thinking about spending that much money on a truck. But I'm trying to accomplish a lot of things and that requires me to have that tow capacity. Now I could have bought an older truck, but the used truck market is crazy that you'll still pay $40,000 for a eight year old truck with 150,000 miles on it. You know, there might have been an option to have there, and maybe I should have got a tradesman and saved some money, but it's a heck of a truck. I appreciate you taking time to watch. Put links right there to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.